Okay, so let's continue on with our periodic table. This is part two of TEK 8.5C. So we just got finished highlighting our noble gases. They are the, all the elements in this family or group that have eight valence electrons or a full valence shell, such as helium, because helium, if y'all remember, has two Eight number two, so it has two electrons on its shell. It only has one shell because the first shell holds two. So these are its outermost electrons, meaning that these are its valence electrons as well. Remember, if you have a full shell, which helium has, first shell only holds two, it also satisfies, satisfies the rule of eight, meaning all elements want eight valence electrons or that full shell helium as that full shell. The rest of these family members have eight. So these are considered elements that are inert or stable. What does that mean? Well, that means these will not react with other elements to form a compound. They are not reactive. So these are our, let's put it in there, noble gases. Not reactive. They will not bond with others to form a new compound. So let's get back to it and see which of these are reactive. Well, we did say that here these guys have 3A in group 13. So the, all of these elements have three valence electrons. Let's do, finish this off with group 14, 4A, meaning they all have four valence electrons. Fifth, fifth, group 15, or family 15 with 5A, meaning they have five valence electrons. Group 16 with 6A, they have six valence electrons. And group 17 has 7A, meaning they have seven valence electrons. Well, what does this all mean? Well, the valence electrons, as we said earlier, determine an element's reactivity. So these numbers, these valence electron numbers, are important to see how elements will bond with one another. So obviously, if I have one valence electron, I am in group number one, I have one valence electron, I'm going to shade these kind of green because they will react or bond because they all want eight valence electrons. He's got one. He wants seven more. Guess what? There are elements that group one will bond with. That is group 17 because group 17 has seven valence electrons. So we're going to shade group 17 the same color as group 1 because they will want to bond with one another if they bump into each other, these two elements. Now let's go to group 2. Group 2, I might do this with a highlighter, let's see. Group 2 has 2A or 2 valence electrons. So it's going to want to get to 8. Obviously, there's one way it can get to 8, and how would that be? Well, if you have 2A, 2 valence electrons, you want 6 more. Well, we do have a group that contains 6, which is group 16, has 6 valence electrons. So group 2 and group 16 are going to want to bond. If these elements come close, they're going to want to combine to form a compound. All right, moving on, let's see the next group. Remember, we're hitting group three here, but group three is a transition metal all the way through group 12. So these don't follow the bonding rules. These are the Bs or the bad boys. They don't follow the rules. So we're going to move right on over to our group 
13, which is 3A, three valence electrons. Group 3 has three valence electrons, and it wants to bond or react with another group to form eight. Which group would that be? If you guessed group 15 with five valence electrons, you're absolutely right. They are going to want to bond as well. And last but not least, we have group 14. Members of group 14 all have four valence electrons. Members of group 14 are going to want to um, bond with members of their own group. So let's find our shot. Here we go. So they're going to stick to one another and bond with each other. So we're just going to shade them all in red. So let's kind of uh, recap here real quick. So valence electrons determine reactivity, meaning they determine if elements in that group groups are up and down will combine to form a compound okay so which groups will combine to form compounds well group one with 1A and group 17 with 7A. Remember, 1 and 7 valence electrons gives you 8. That's what all elements want. 8 is great, so they will bond. Group 2 with 2 valence electrons and group 16 with 6 valence electrons, they will bond to form a compounds. Group 13 with three valence electrons and group 15 with five valence electrons, they will bond to create a compound. And group 14 with 4A bonds with 14. This is the most basic way that elements combine to form compounds. Are there other ways to get to eight valence electrons? Sure there are. We look at oxygen has six valence electrons and hydrogen has one. We all know that H2O exists so if you've got two hydrogen, that's one valence electron, two valence electron, and oxygen has six, that makes eight. So there are other ways they bond. This is the most simplistic form. So let's see if you can answer a couple questions now. So our very first question is, groups, we said, are like families. They share similar properties. What similar properties do all group members or members in a group share. If you said they all share the same number of valence electrons, you are absolutely correct. So what similar properties are they sharing? The same number of valence electrons which also not only is a physical property of these elements, but it also makes them the same reactive, right? Because one, they all have one valence electrons, they all want seven more. Okay, one more thing to add to our periodic table. We need to know which elements are the most reactive metals and which elements are the most reactive nonmetals. If you guessed here, Group one is the most reactive metals. Because they all want seven more. So they can, if they can find somebody with seven valence electrons from group 17, 
they can kind of give off one and share with them to give them a full valence shell. And of course, group 17, they only have one more to go. So these two are the most reactive. This is the metals, but over here, what is this area? These are the nonmetals. So this is the most reactive nonmetals group. Those are the most reactive nonmetals. All right, so based on all of this that we now know and understand, we can answer a couple more questions. So as I do a couple of questions, the best thing for you to do is just pause your video once I ask the question, and then we can um, see if you got it right. I'll answer it for you. So let's see. We're going to do... Uh, a little card, let me find a card, an element card, and this just gives you clues. It's like mystery element. So we have here element two, and it says it gives us some clues. The clues are it's steel, gray solid, so steel in color, so metallic, obviously. It's a brittle metalloid, though it says. It has five valence electrons and four energy levels. So pause and see if you can find the element that has five valence electrons and four energy levels. Well, if you answered, let's look for it. Four energy levels, that's one, two, three, period four, so we're in this row, right? And five valence electrons means five A, so our answer would be right here. This element two would be arsenic. All right, let's try another one. Uh, element clue, element clue 18, Roman numeral 18. Uh, it says it's highly radioactive. It is a metal. It has seven energy levels and one valence electron. So we are looking for a most reactive metal, it looks like, with one valence electron. So once you have it, let me know. And if we have seven energy levels, obviously we're period seven. If we have one valence electron, we are in group or family one. So our answer is going to be francium. Interesting. All right, let's try one more. Element 20. It's Roman numeral 20. It doesn't really matter what it says here. The clues are important to answer what element it is. So it says it's white or red brittle solid. Brittle gives us a little bit of a clue there. Must be a non-metal, right? Brittle solids. Three energy levels and five valence electrons. Pause to see if you got it. Okay, so three energy levels. I'm in one, two, three, period three. And five valence electrons, I am here. So I'm one, two, three, and five A. Phosphorus. All right, let's see if you can answer a little bit more demanding question here. Um, here's one. Which element is found in group five, period four? Which element is found in group five, period four? Pause it if you need to. So we're in period four, group Five is here. Vandium, group five, period four. All right, what is a property that elements in the same family or group all have in common? Yes, the number of valence electrons, good job. All right, if you're looking at something like this and you see two elements, it gives you the number of protons. So that alone will help you identify it, right? Because the eight number
and 